Our next formula is more complicated. You can see here, we've got more letters. A lot of the letters are the same though. I'm adding A. A is the future value. What's it gonna do later on? P is the same, R is the same. N, this one's new, is the number of times that we're gonna accrue interest. Now N's gonna come up as a word in our problem and I've written those out down here. So we're gonna see things like annually, semi-annually, quarterly, monthly, daily. And we have to turn those words into the number that goes with them. So real quick, annually means one time a year, like your anniversary. Semi-annually is two times a year. Quarterly makes sense because they're four quarters and a dollar, or a quarter is one fourth, so that's four. Monthly is 12 because there's 12 months in the year. And we're gonna say that daily is 365. And then T is the same. Again, remember it has to be in years. So we're still just gonna plug in. Remember to type in your calculator the way that I have written, parentheses and everything. If you're not getting the same answer, the first thing you need to check is that your calculator, um, you're typing in your calculator the right way. So here's our first example. We're depositing to account that pays interest and it's compounded quarterly. Now you might be asking yourself, why are we using a different formula than we did before? The last one was simple interest. So our interest was calculated right at the beginning and wasn't calculated again. It was set at the beginning. Compounding interest, which is what this formula is, recalculates our interest every single compounding period. So maybe every single month, or in this first example, every quarter. They see how much we owe, or how much money we have in the account, depending which way we're going there, and they calculate the interest based on that. So the interest changes with each one of these um, compounding. So that's the reason we have to have two different formulas. I'm gonna plug in my formula. I'm depositing 5,000, so that's P. It's always one plus. My interest rate is 0 0.05. Remember to change that to a decimal. You can divide by 100 or move two decimal places. Compounded quarterly. So that tells me that my N was four because the word quarterly just makes me think of four. And then in the exponent, you need to make sure and put parentheses there with the exponent, is four times three. N, which was four, notice these are the same, and then time was three years. You wanna make sure and type this in. This four times three right here is in the exponent. So you need to use your little exponent key a lot of times that's the caret button on the calculator. Now I have calculator steps uploaded to our Moodle and my MathLab page. So if you want step-by-step -step buttons that you should push, just go and take a look at that file. You also can stop by my office hours or math outreach hours and we can like show you um, what to type in on your calculator, like on a video. So I get my answer, type in my calculator, I get $5,803.77. Follow-up question, we wanna know how much interest is earned. Now just kinda of in life, this one doesn't have a formula, the interest is what comes when you start with the principal, then you add the interest to it, and then you get your final amount. So I know the final amount here, and I know how much I started with. So I ended up with the $5,803.77. I started with the 5,000, so the difference between those kind of by definition, is the interest. I started at 5,000, I grew to this much, and so that growth is the interest. So my interest is $803.77. I'd really like you guys not to try to memorize new things with these follow-up problems, like with B here, but really understand what it means to be interest. Interest is how much you gained from when you started with P to when you ended with A. So here's just another um, problem. We're depositing, so that's our P. My R is 0 0.06. Compounded semi-annually means N is two. And 14 months, remember, with those 14 months, oh, can't really see it there, that uh, is 14 over 12. I'm gonna plug all this in, my P, my R, my N, and my T is gonna be 14 over 12. And that's gonna give me the answer, 9,020 and then 20 cents. 
keep everything the same, except for this time, instead of 14 months, I want it to be seven years. So I'm gonna change anything but this T up here at the top. So it shows if I leave my money in the account, I make a lot more money. So if I started with $8,400, but I could only keep in the bank for 14 months before I took it out, yeah, I would get some money. I have more than what I started with. But I could, if I could leave that money alone and not touch it, I would end up with a whole bunch of money. And so that's really where we see our savings come up is when we can um, invest money and then not have to draw back out. And that's because we're compounding. So every six months, semi-annually, we get interest added. So the longer we can leave it in there, the more interest that's added. All right, so here's another one of these uh, compound interest. This one's gonna work slightly different because they wanna know how much we must deposit. So that means we are looking for P. We don't know what P is. So I want to do a little bit of algebra on this one. They tell me my interest rate, tell me I'm compounding quarterly. So N is four. And they give me this other money amount. They tell me that that's how much I want to have. So that's kind of like my goal. So this $10,000 is A, not P. And I know that just from really carefully reading the directions and kind of like the context clues that are in there. So now when I plug in, I'm gonna plug in 10,000 for A. I'm gonna leave the letter P and plug in my R, my N, and my T. Now I'm looking for P. So I'm gonna type in all this other stuff, parentheses and all, in my calculator. It's gonna give me a crazy decimal. Do not round. We cannot round till the end. So I'm gonna keep my crazy decimal. Now I need to solve for P. And that might kind of look really weird, but if you think about this being a like simplified algebra problem, you guys know how to solve this. 2X equals 10. You would divide both sides by two to give you x equals five. I'm gonna do the same thing here. This is a crazy number, but that's what I'm gonna divide by. So I'm gonna divide both sides by this 1.23, eight, I'm gonna type in all the numbers. Don't round there. I'm just being lazy with my writing. So we're typing all this, so they would cross out. So 10,000 divided by 1.23844008084, use all the numbers, gives me my final answer. And then I can round my final answer to two decimal places. All right, for the next one, um, what I, give it a try. Maybe cover up the work if you're looking at the filled in notes or if you have your blank notes packet with you, then go ahead and give that one a try before you continue on with the video. So go ahead and hit pause um, to give that one a try. So this one, we're looking um, again for our P. If the inflation rate is, they give me R, how much did an item cost four years ago? So anytime we're doing what I call time travel, if we're going back in time or like springing forward, if we're doing any sort of time traveling, that's where we're gonna have this weird method where we solve for P, we're plugging in for A. So something costs seven thousand um, dollars. Now we're looking for what it used to cost four years ago. So I'm plugging the seven thousand for A. My interest rate was given to me, and then it tells us that we're going to compound annually. We don't expect you to know that, so we're just going to say, "Hey, since it's inflation, n is going to be one." So n equals one, and then it said four years. So I'm plugging in four. Type all this in my calculator. It gives me, so typing all that stuff in gives me this crazy decimal. Then I want to divide both sides by this crazy decimal. I'm going to cheat again. I'm not going to write them all out because I don't have space using this board. But you would type all of them in the calculator. Divided by 7,000 divided by 1.08549167 gives me my final answer of $6,448.69. What this means is if something costs $6,448.69 with inflation, four years from now, it should end up costing $7,000.